sisters and welcome to this homily sharing session of the Claritian Biblical Apostolate. Today I have the great pleasure of sharing the homily from the Gospel of the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time with you and it is taken from Mark chapter 10, 17 to 30. I read, as he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to Jesus and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you would have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked round and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brother or sister or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news. Who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age? Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecution, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, the portion of Mark chapter 10 we read began from verse 17 and it ends in chapter in verse 30. However, it would be good to indicate a few things in the earlier parts of chapter 10. We shed some light on the verses we have just listened to. Earlier in Mark chapter 10, in verse 1 precisely, the verse which introduces the chapter. We are told that Jesus went to the region of Judea and was teaching beyond the Jordan. Now this is a significant statement because this statement makes a tacit reference to the person of Moses because in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 26 Moses addressed the people of Israel just before they crossed the Jordan into the land which the Lord was about to give to the people of Israel. He commanded them in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 8 to 11 to make sure that they keep the law that the Lord God will give them as they enter the land. Now for this reason, Jesus, the statement we hear from Mark chapter 10, that Jesus was teaching beyond the Jordan suggests something important and significant. 
It suggests a new interpretation of the law by a new Moses in a new Exodus. And this is why the first theme from Mark chapter 10 is the interpretation of the law of Moses concerning divorce. Now we have a new Moses who was given a new interpretation of the law. Remember, we took this reading last Sunday. Now, the second major theme, which makes direct reference to the obedience of the law and the commandments, six of which were quoted by Jesus himself in this gospel reading of today, is actually what is before us. Now, when this young man told Jesus he had kept these laws, we were told that Jesus looked at this man and loved him. However, Jesus made a request in keeping with the new way of interpreting the law. And now, from, that, from now on, for those whom Jesus Christ has personally called to this new Israel, the law assumes a new dimension. And that dimension is both personal and sacrificial. It is no longer enough to meticulously keep the law in the old ways, when the law obliges us to make sacrifice for the good of others. It was a new way of conceiving our indebtedness to others as a result of the law. Now, pay close attention to the words of Jesus. The six laws that Jesus Christ mentioned in his reply to this man made direct reference to the way we humans will relate with one another. He said, Do not kill. Do not commit adultery or steal. Do not bear false witness or defraud. Honor your father and your mother. When one is called by Jesus, there is a radical invitation to take our commitment to others to another level. And that could in fact mean giving up everything to accomplish so much with him. The perfect example is the one he gave us himself. He was the person who had everything but gave up everything for the sake of humanity. What Jesus Christ was asking this young man to do is to develop a new way of loving humanity and obeying the law through sacrifice. And when the young man could not do this, Jesus immediately recognized how difficult excessive love of material things can make this venture. Materialism is the reason why there are so many wars, fights, disagreements. If we can free ourselves from the yoke of excessive pursuit of material wealth, we will be much freer and happier people. So Jesus is not asking us to take on suffering for its own sake, no, but to join him in the mission of changing the world through sacrificial love and service. And that was the request he made to this young man. That is the request Jesus Christ is making of all of us today. Jesus Christ is not asking you to suffer meaninglessly. No. Jesus Christ is asking us today to understand that obedience to the law requires that we understand that that law forces us to see the suffering humanity and to identify with it even if it means giving up everything for the sake of others, we should be able to do that. Because that is the new way that Jesus Christ has interpreted the law. Everything is based on love, and that love is sacrificial love. Obeying the law without seeing the next person, or the person who is suffering, the person who needs our attention, is completely meaningless. So Jesus Christ is rooting the conception of the law in existence of man, in the existence of suffering humanity. And that is what he's asking us today to do, to take sacrifice as part of the ways in which we are contributing and changing the world with him and in his person. May God bless you. Have a beautiful Sunday.